another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And today is a great day. We get to hear from one of my favorite authors. His name is Chris Ratter, and no doubt you've heard me talk about how important his book, Mediumship Within, has been in my own life. His book combines practical advice with personal experience to inform and guide the reader on their development of mediumship and healing. And as for healing, Chris is a special kind of spiritual healer who performs hands-off, non-invasive psychic surgery and trance healing. He works with a powerful team of surgeons, doctors, and healers from the spirit realms using his healing hands to channel their healing energy. This energy is then used to address the ailments and diseases which are present within our bodies, minds, emotions, and spirit. Chris holds weekly surgeries near his home in Scotland and also holds regular monthly surgeries across the UK, Ireland, and Europe. And now it should be noted that Chris is not a medical doctor and his healing services should be used in conjunction with the advice of your own doctor. His website is Chris Ratter, PsychicSurgeon.com. So Chris Ratter, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you, Shandon, and thank you very much for inviting me on to your radio show. I'm looking forward to to what takes place today. Yeah, am I pronouncing your last name correctly? I didn't think to ask you. Yes, yes, that's correct. It's Ratter, R-A-T-T-E-R. Yeah, as close as an American can pronounce it. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Oh, well, I appreciate (laughs) you. And just for our listener, just to know that, yeah, I'm best Many of us, we struggle with our, um, oh, our calling in life. And there I was really wanting to do some research, more research on mediumship and why are these things happening to me and these things not happening to me. And I did a Google search. Well, lo and behold, Chris, Chris's book came up and I thought, oh, and I downloaded it on Kindle and I read it within just two days. It, it felt as if he wrote every word in there just for me. Uh, and it is it is my most favorite book on developing mediumship. So, Chris, thank you for that. Oh, listen, I thank you for, for your kind words regarding the book. Uh, the book really was an inspiration that came from Spirit Side of Life. I had been asked for quite some time from the spirit world uh, to start a book and to write it, and I had been putting it off for a little while. And then at the spirit world, uh, obviously, you know, we have a good communication with the people that work for me work with me, I should say. And they came forward and asked for the book uh, to be written, and I took up the challenge. And I'm absolutely delighted how the book turned out, to be very truthful with you. It was uh, very interesting, Sandra, how the book really uh, sort of came forward was the fact that the spirit world had said to myself that there's lots of books written on mediumship when the mediums on the pioneers of the past had been at the pinnacle of their mediumship. And there wasn't really a, a, a book that explained the journey of how they became uh, so prominent figures within the spiritual movement. So the spirit world had asked me to, uh, to write a book regarding my my journey and to the explanation, obviously, of things that would take place through you know the, the mediumship and the, and the development. And it's the most really, I promise you, it's the most interesting story. Was that the spirit world had come forward and said to myself, "If you write the book, the book will be published." And I, to be very truthful, you never really thought about ever writing a book. It was nothing I sort of ever thought that I would ever dream of being able to do. But I took the opportunity to allow the spirit world to come through and really to help channel the book, channel the lovely words that come through. And I, you know, I thought it was most interesting because the book actually took about three months to write. Wow. And then when we had, yeah, when we had the book written sufficiently, we thought, what are we going to do with this book? And I always had that thing in the back of my mind, you know, the spirit will say it will it will be published. And I do have lots of friends that have written books and had to self-publish. That's a very common way that people have to publish, obviously, their own, you know, their own yes. literature. So what I did was I, uh, I, you know, wrote the book sufficiently where I thought it was okay and I needed someone to shape it. And then all of a sudden, a, a very good friend of mine who I would dedicate the book to, uh, give him a little uh, dedication to the book, is John Hamley, who came and crossed my path. He was a college lecturer in Aberdeen, uh, sorry, Dundee. And John had said, if you give me a little look at the book, I will see if I can shape it up a little bit for you. So between myself and John, over maybe about four or five weeks, we shaped up the book, and then we were sitting on uh, Friday evening at, it's in a very interesting part of the story, 
about quarter to 12 uh, on a Friday evening, where we were 23.45, we decided that we would send, you know, uh, the, the copy of the book to a publisher's. And we got an automated generated email which said, you know, if you haven't heard anything within a week, then please look in your sort of your, your trash, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I, on the Monday morning, I received uh, an email from the publishing company and said that I had passed the first stage, which I thought was absolutely astounding, to be truthful with you. So somewhere over, it was a bank holiday weekend. So somewhere over that weekend, someone or the spirit world had guided someone to read the, you know, the book and, and all, all its content. And had decided, obviously, that it was worth, obviously, putting out to their independent readers who are not spiritualists, but just people who are independently. And within five days, we'd had about five or six different, obviously, reviews coming back from these people saying that this book should be out to the public. And within uh, within that sort of week, I had a publishing deal. So, you know, and it's just really testimony to to the spirit world. You know, that we really have to believe in the work that we do and the information that we receive from those that work with us from Spirit Side of Life. For they said the book would be published and right to the date it was published. Absolutely astounding. Oh, know. that's amazing. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I know from just being a reader, and even from the people that I speak with uh, and some of the listeners that email me, people want to know how they can get started. They're feeling this little nudge to uh, develop. And you know, where would one start? And, and to hear your journey and you are a funny man you've got your personality definitely uh within the book as well as uh, the, the spirit world what they whatever they said and it was just really joyous to hear your um your story would you mind sharing just how a little bit of it how you got into the world of um even developing your own mediumship and then obviously we'll talk about the healing as well but how you got started I suppose well, what happened to me, for, for about 17 years, I, I was a, a night shift taxi driver, a driver in Edinburgh. And I one evening I would was, I came home, I was lying in my bed, and really what happened was I, was, I became aware of a white light, a bright light that came to shone in my eyes, which is very common to be very truthful with you, with lots of people who uh, are introduced to the spirit world. And when I closed my eyes, this bright light appeared. And when I opened my eyes, the light disappeared and the room was in total darkness. And this went on, uh, you know, all through sort of the, all through the night, very truthful with you. And I kind of thought it was my boy who was just really sort of playing a trick on me, you know. Mm-hmm. He just, I was at that age where he was about seven or eight year old at the time. And obviously, you know, I thought he was being a little bit mischievous, you know, just having a, you know, a little carry on with his father. And then this went on all night to be very truthful with you. And then I, you know, eventually managed to fall asleep. The second night, the same thing happened again. The light, when I got back, obviously, from my work in my shift, and I went to, to my bed, the light went on and off. And this continued for, for a period of time. And I really couldn't quite understand what was really taking place. I had no idea that it was the spirit world that were making the contact, obviously, to their, their realm through that, uh, you know, when you're going to that unconsciousness state, when you're almost sleeping. And this went on for quite some time, and I really thought, you know, that, you know, I just was unsure of it. I really didn't know what was going on. And then after a period of time, I started to hear, uh, you know, uh, voices, you know, uh, within the room. And when I opened my eyes, I could see, you know, sort of spirit people. And then the people were becoming more, vis- more visible to me, that I could see them just like, oh, just like normal people just walking down the street, standing in my room. And then one evening, I tried to obviously shut all these things down. Didn't know how to do it. Was very fearful of it, to be honest with you. Sure. At the, at the time, my a member of my family had been diagnosed with schizophrenia, and I was, uh, you know, thinking to myself that maybe this was hereditary within the family. Yeah. You see. And then one evening, when I went to my bed, I closed my eyes, and just as soon as I closed my eyes, and even today, I still have that. But I understand it now. It's a connection to the spirit world when they're coming forward. But this bright light appeared, and then I heard the lady's voice saying, I'm speaking to you. Because that sort of startled me, to be honest with you. And I remember looking up and looking at the bottom of my bed, and he was a lady. Wow. And this lady, yes, indeed, I promise you, I'll never forget it, you know. And this lady walked towards the bed and then turned to, to her left and walked out right through the door. And I just shook my head in disbelief of what, I had, what had taken place. Through the door. Uh, and the door was closed, the door. right? Yeah, the door, yeah. the door was closed. The lady walked right, right through the door. And this time it kind of startled me, and I did wake my wife up. You know, this has been going on maybe for now for a few months. And I spoke to my wife, and obviously, you know, of course, with Gail was, that's my wife. She was obviously startled when I woke her up. 
and she says, she listened to what I had to say. She says, everything will be okay. And to be very truthful, I was very surprised at that because I really felt that I was going to get a bollock in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, indeed. And then I, uh, you know, managed to get back to sleep after maybe half an hour. Of course, the light started going on again and off, on again in my eyes, and I couldn't quite understand what was going on. And then the following day, uh, I went obviously to work. I was absolutely knackered by this time because I hadn't been sleeping very much. And we now know the spirit will come, you know, the most prominent time that they come towards us is between 2 and 5 o'clock in the morning. We don't know why that is, but it seems to be when the most activity takes place okay. from the spirit, within spirit realms. And then I got home, went to my bed the following night, and once again, I heard the voice saying, I'm, I'm speaking to you. And I kind of, you know, tried to dismiss it from my mind. And I heard that once again, when this was this was clear audibly, it wasn't in my mind or anything. I could hear, I could hear the conversation taking place, and then I felt I was becoming strangled. To be very truthful with you, I thought someone was trying to strangle me, and I really, really I jumped with fright and just about you know landed on top of my wife, which didn't go down too well that evening either. <sighs> and then she uh, says to me, "What's what, what, you understand?" She says, "What what what's going on?" And I thought, you know, I said, "Listen, I said I don't know what's going on. I can't explain it." I says, "But you know, someone's trying to strangle me." And she says, oh, you're just having a dream. I says, I'm not dreaming, I can assure you. I says, this is taking place. And then she, I managed to settle myself down. As soon as I sort of went back into that sleep state, I heard the voice again saying, I'm speaking to you. And once again, this feeling as if someone was trying to throttle me. But it's an absolute panic. I actually got out of bed. I didn't know what to do. I thought, I need to go and see, or, you know, look at maybe some, some specialist help here, to be honest with you. Sure. And the following day, I spoke to my wife regarding, obviously, what, what took place, taking place. And Gail had said, listen, you know, what do you want to do? And, I, and all of a sudden, this thought came into my mind to go to a spiritualist church. Now, when I was a boy, my grandfather used to take me, you know, to a spiritualist meetings. And for some strange reason, this thought was impressed upon my mind. And I went along and spoke to the lady who was a, a president of a church, but she wasn't a medium, a spiritualist medium. And she tried to give me an explanation of what was going on. And although it did settle me a little bit, it didn't really give me the answers that I needed just to, you know, to understand what was going on within, you know, my my development. That I know what it is now. But at the time, like I say, I thought I was schizophrenic. The following night, me and my wife went down to uh, visit a spiritualist medium who was doing a demonstration, and it was absolutely wonderful to watch. There was about forty people, I think, in the group, and the lady was walking up and down, giving you know messages from people that had passed over the spirit side of life, and the audience could take all the messages, and it fascinated me. And after uh, the lady had done a demonstration, I approached the lady and uh, tried to explain to her what had been taking place. And the first thing the lady says to me was, you're not mad, by the way. And I thought, thank goodness for that. And I thought, well, how do you really know I'm not mad? And she says, well, she says, the spirit, there's too many people, too much spirit activity around about you just to be family members. She says, what's happened is you're starting to emanate an invisible white light, which can be seen from spirit side of life. She says, it's invisible to the human eye. She says, but the white light is there and the spirit world people are drawn to it for it as an indication, like a lighthouse. She says that you have the ability to hear them, feel them or see them or see them. Wow. She says, and they're being drawn to you. And I thought, well, well that's fine. I says, but what do I do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you can understand that. Eh? <laughs> She says, I, uh, she actually says, that you, you can tell them to, and she used a sweary word, off, if you can mm-hmm. understand. And I sure. thought, you know, and I thought, I can't believe I just heard this from this lady who was a, a you know, spiritualist medium. I say, is addressing a, a, a group <laughs> of people, telling them how much the spirit world is all about love and all <laughs> these things. Uh-uh. But to be very truthful, yeah, at the time I had been driving a taxi for many years, so I probably was, you know, it was an indication from the spirit world that I probably needed to hear those words. Yes. You understand, you know? Yes. yes. And I thought, that's fine. I said, well, what do I do? And she says, I'll give you a little exercise. She says, it'll take about a week, she says, and you'll be able to block them from you. Just a little exercise of putting a white light around you or your body and pushing it out into your room, you know, with, with a prayer, obviously, to God. She said, and do these things, and it will eventually it'll stop them coming towards you. And to be to be honest with you, it did after a week, it started to calm down a little bit. Good. And then that sort of started to pique my interest, you know. Obviously, if these people were coming, there was always a reason for them coming. You know, it wasn't, you know, I didn't want it to be sporadic. I wanted to have an understanding of it. I wanted to know what these people wanted. You know, uh, you know I didn't know my gift was going to be healing at the time. But I just wanted to obviously look a little bit further. I was very sceptical, to be very truthful with you, and I do think that is healthy, you know, in all walks of life, especially, you know, in the work that we do. But I went and eventually joined a, a development group, 
and that really set me on my path for the work early ahead. Wow, and the development group, did that was that through the <coughs> Spiritualist Church? It was indeed, yes. Usually, uh, you know, uh, development groups are, you know, involved with Spiritualist Church. Not, I, I've never been involved in the uh, in Spiritual National Union, to be honest with you. There is lots of independent churches or Spiritualist Church and mediums, you know, and to be very true for you, I've, I've always been guided by the spirit world. I mean, I didn't know really where to go for a development group, and I sort of put the, the thought out just to the universe, I suppose, and then I was invited along uh, to, to join a development group. It was actually that lady that gave me a little bit of advice, but she used the sweary word. <laughs> it was that, yes, indeed. It was that lady that actually invited me along to a development group, which I attended for about three months and found very interesting. Although I didn't really understand a lot about it, to be very truthful with you, but what was happening in that group was I was becoming aware of lots of different colors that seemed to come forward when I was in a meditation. And that was was the, sort of the beginning of the process for me to get in, to understand, you know, that the spirit will come in energy, the coming color, the coming lots of different things, you know. Mm. It's, a, it's a vibrational world, you know, that we live in, and they they are, they are an energy, they are a vibration themselves. Chris, a quick question: When you were in this mm-hmm. development group, at any time did you do any like evidential mediumship? What I did is, yes, the, uh, the worst from time to time when the lady would get us to team up with, with uh, different people within the group that were developing themselves. And I do recall one evening when I was giving a lady a message or I was trying to link into the spirit world to see what, what would come forward, any information that I could give forward. And I remember a little girl's face just appeared to the side of the mother, just like I'm looking at your picture just now just appeared at the side of the lady's face, just, just a beautiful wee girl, and I described this picture that I had seen of this little girl, and it turned out it was her daughter that she had lost just a year previously, who was in the spirit world. Wow. And that, and I thought, you know, I mean, I wasn't a developed medium there, to be very truthful with you, but I just, I was just able to see this, the spirit world could see into me, I'm very fortunate, I promise you. I have, you know, a gift from the spirit world, which, you know, and it truly is a gift, you know, it's their gift, it's not my gift, it's a gift that belongs to them. But I've always been able, you know, since sort of development and looking at things, to see objectively, which is, you know, people as they build up and stand alongside, and also subjectively, which is inside the mind. So I've been able to see it both ways, which can be rather confusing sometimes, I can assure you. Especially even, you know, through the development when I used to drive my cab, and very often as uh, lots of people carry spirit people with them, and what would happen is people would get into the taxi to hire for, for, for a fare, and I'd be aware of spirit people walking in with them. No, oh, that's, you know? w- that's oh, crazy. Yeah, it's wild, I can assure you, you know, especially when you're, when you're driving to a destination and you would have, you know, someone from spirit side of life saying, please tell them I'm here. Could you tell them I'm here? You know, but you can't do that because you can never sort of, you know, sort of put yourself forward and, and sort of, you know, I would never sort of do that to people to be very truthful, you know. So you have to obviously say to the spirit, well, I'm awful sorry, you need, to, you need to try to step back, please, if you don't mind. But some of them can be quite forceful, you know, once they realize that you're able to, you know, to connect with them, you know. Of course, but you have to have respect for people. People come from all different walks of life and have all different beliefs. And of course, yeah. Oh my gosh! So, in, in your uh, development, was it learning about trance that happened next? Well, what happened to me very truthfully, I, I looked at you know developing mental mediumship. I never wanted to be a healer. It was, it was the furthest thing from my mind. I can assure you. You know, lots of people when they come into this movement or, or to do or to look, obviously, when they become aware of, you know, the, the, the spirit world, if that's like, you know, the way to put it forward, it's what I have in all shadow people, is they look at the avenue of healing. But for myself, I wanted to be a mental medium, you know, but I wanted to learn to give one-to-one readings, which is a form of healing anyway. We understand that, you know. Yeah. It's about healing of, 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 of the heart and the mind and that kind of thing, you know, to give to, to, to give people information that the loved ones are still very much alive. Although we've lost the physical contact, but life is eternal and people can still come forward and are, and are a part of our everyday lives, you know, just through life force energy. But I wanted to develop that, and I studied that for about a year and a half which I thought really was my path, to be honest with you. And then one evening when I was at a group, I actually joined two or three different groups, which is kind of frowned upon with with tutors. But Mm -hmm. I have always been on the opinion that we work for the spirit world. It's a spirit world wish 
uh, to developers. So we really should, you know, try and embrace as much as possible and like a sponge just shook up as much as information as we can. But, you know, lots of tutors have this thing that, you know, they're teaching you. I don't know if it's an ego thing to be very truthful with you. Uh-huh. You know, that in case, obviously, when you develop and if you come into the pinnacle of your mediumship, that people say, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I taught them or whatever they did. And it's really despicable to teach us all the time to be very truthful with you. Yes. But anyway, I, I, I developed for about a year and a half in this class. And then I, well, in different classes. And then what happened one day was this energy came upon me, which absolutely shook me for six. But I didn't know what it was. I never experienced it. But I felt this energy come close to me, an energy like I had never felt before in my life. And it had an adverse effect on my body. What happened is my body started to shake. And then as the, as, as the energy came closer and closer, you know, the vibration the, of the frequency started to shake more and more till it was uncontrollable, almost like having hyperthermia, that sort of, you know, complete shaking. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what was going on. I, my mind sort of became detached of what was taking place within the room. Uh, and I could hear in the distance, I could hear a voice, which was the tutor's voice at the time, of the lady saying, it's okay, everything's okay, it's okay, just go with it, everything's fine, we know what that is. But it was like in the distance to me. It was like, you know, they might have been 50 feet from me to be truthful with you. And this went on maybe for, for quite a, quite some time, maybe about 15 minutes. And then eventually it, it calmed down. The person or the energy left me. I didn't know what it was to be very truthful with you. I was absolutely fearful of it. And the lady says to me, luckily enough, you know, I've always been guided with the spirit side of life or the, or the people where they wanted to put me at the right place. And this uh, tutor, this teacher of the class, who was a mental mediumship, was also a trance medium and had been involved in that side of mediumship for 30 years. And the lady went on to explain that what I had experienced was the spirit world wishing to come forward and to experiment with me through the vibration and look at trance energy to see if it ever was compatible with it. But it didn't really mean a lot to me to be very truthful with you. And when, you know, maybe after about 20 minutes of trying to get myself back together, she says to me, you'll be absolutely fine. And I was when I was in the group. But once I got back in my car and started driving home, then the fear started to kick in. Mm-hmm. And then when I got home, I tried to explain to my wife, you know, obviously what had took place that, that evening. But it didn't really mean a lot to her. It didn't mean a lot to me to be very truthful. It was just obviously, you know, I was a little bit fearful of it. And I didn't want to explain to my wife that I really was fearful of what was going on because, you know, I'm sure my wife would have said to me, that's enough, we're not doing that anymore. Exactly. Indeed. So I didn't tell her. And of course, in the middle of the night, I went to my bed because I was a, a night shift taxi driver and I had been for many, many years. So obviously, I go to bed. We went to bed later than my wife. And then when I went to bed, you know, the same thing, white light on, white light off, all this kind of thing, which now I was getting quite accustomed to, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I felt an energy coming upon me, which was very similar to what had took place that evening at the development group. And I, and I locked up my bed, jumped up my bed, and I remember shouting, don't you dare, don't you dare, and shot down the stairs, you know. <laughs> and I, I didn't know what it was, to be honest with you. And then I phoned the tutor, you know, in her home. And she said, oh, you'll be okay. And I said, it's okay for you to say that. <laughs> You're not here, you know. And then I, uh, she said, you're going to be fine. She says, just tell me you don't want to do that. And then she says to me at the time, have you set your boundaries? And I didn't know what boundaries were. She says, what, what do you mean setting boundaries? So although I've been in a development group or two or three different development groups for about a year and a half, Nobody had explained to me, even in these development groups, what a boundary was. But you have to tell the spirit world what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept. If you only wish for the spirit world to come forward and to work and develop with you when you're in a confined or a safe environment with people who understand it. I had done none of this. And nobody had told me. And then she explained what boundaries were. And then I obviously spoke to my gatekeeper at the time, who's Grey Horse, and says to him, obviously, I'm not going to accept this. And only wanted it to take place at the group. And that really started me on to obviously trans trans develop, and that's what really began for me. Well, how did you meet Grey Horse now, and find Grey out Horse, that he's your guide? Well, what actually happened with that? I went for a, as lots of people do. I went for as you you know as people go for spiritual assessments or for readings, and I wanted to know you know just obviously just to hear from my grandfather. My grandfather has a big influence on me all through my life. You know, my grandfather was a very spiritual person, you know, and I know that more now, obviously, when he's on spirit side of life, but he very, very often comes back and we have lovely conversations with him. But I, uh, you know, I went for a meeting and a lady says to me, there's, there's a guy that's come forward through with, she says, and he's bringing a grey horse with him. Hmm. She says, this gentleman is your doorkeeper. 
And I thought I was not our doorkeeper, and she explained to me as someone who obviously a gatekeeper who looks after things, and you know they have to go. The spirit people have to really come through him to speak. And even at the time, I thought to myself, well, all these people came through to see me, and he didn't they stop them. No, he didn't. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, but well, that's but back to the boundary thing again, I suppose. Yeah, right. And that's how it come about. And then I, I obviously was was aware of the gentleman being there, and then I, you know asked and like everyone does i had asked for his name and repeatedly sort of bombarded for his name his actually name is two moons that that is his, his, his true name but when he came forward and told me i couldn't pick it up and i, I was like two moons two 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 rivers two and i really couldn't you know hear the conversation mm-hmm. and then he says to me just call me gray horse she says it doesn't matter he says what you call us she says names are immaterial he says if you're happy with gray horse i'm happy with that and that's why I make reference to him as Grey Horse. Wow. So, okay, Chris, this is this is a great story. And it was my body that started shaking doing meditation okay. uncontrollably. That And that's what I put in the Google search. And that's when I found you in your book. Uh, and since then, it's subsided. You know, you taught me about boundaries and what I'm accepting and what I don't. And even now, uh, my deal with the spirit world is to know that they're with me. I just get one little blast of a shake and I say, oh, you're here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my agreement. So it, but so thank you for that. Thank you for being willing to share because that's what introduced me to you. It is, it is lovely, Sandra, you know, and, and very often what happens when the spirit will come forward to us, they do have a calling card, as you see, a little shake or whatever. But what we must always remember is that calling card could leave us at any time. You know, I, I when I, you know, teach an, or, or tutor people, you know, very often at the beginning there will be a calling card or people get used to that energy that comes forward from spirit side of life. Mm-hmm. But what we do tell I- people is that, you know, the spirit will can take that calling card away from us at any time or someone new can come forward to work with us through that energy and they may not have that calling card. And then what happens, us as developing mediums, we can say to ourselves that there's something wrong with our mediumship because that hasn't happened. Oh. So I always tell people, it's lovely to have a calling card, but I would not, after a period of time, once you start to trust them and you trust yeah. the people that come forward, to ask them to take that away from you because when the energy comes, you can't mistake it anyway. Wow, that's great. So when you started now sitting for trance, now there's a definitely a jump from uh, sitting for trance to healing. Can you walk us through how that developed? Well, to be very truthful with you, the, there's no difference in the energy that comes forward for, for, from the, the trance energy for healing, for, you know, for, for having conversations, allowing them to come through and to use you as a channel to communicate and to speak. It's all the same energy and the same feeling too because all mediumship and, and, and all its varieties all comes from one source and that's the universal energy or that godlike power, whatever your, your, your beliefs are. Okay. All the energy comes from, from the same source, I can assure you. There's, there's never ever, you know, very often we'll hear mediums or people say that that medium is a powerful medium. It's not because the energy comes for the same people for everybody and their mediumship. The only difference is, is that medium has accepted the energy and the power that comes forward. Wow. So it really is important to think that because people often think, you know, and we do hear even today we say, that's a powerful medium. No, it's not. The power is all the same, I promise you. From a, a, a fledgling, someone who's just dipping their toe into the into the spiritual world, uh, you know, for, for development, or someone who's been doing it for a very long time. Although maybe they carry the power, it's because we understand the energy. We trust that the trans energy, uh, universal energy, is around about us all the time. And all we do is we learn just to plug into it and just to have the understanding that that energy is around us all the time. I promise you. With us as mediums and what we do, we're not, we're not, you know, we develop all the time. We develop every part of our life when we're here, what we do. But really what we're doing is we're going back and and going through and refreshing our mind to the things we've already forgotten. Because we come from the spirit world and all the energy and all the people come forward are spirit. So the link is spirit, spirit, to spirit. So it's always there. That's good so, to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I think many of us think, oh, we're learning this for the first time. And we're not. We're remembering. No. We're just remembering, I promise you. Just remember everything we've forgotten. That's why very often when we do develop, it's we'll say, oh, I understand that. It's because we've already, we already know it. Oh, that's you great know? news. So let's, let's talk about the healing, though, because this is fascinating and this is what, you're, what you do. 
So when the when 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 the, the healing energy came about for myself, to be very truthful, you healing for me was at the furthest of from my mind. To be very truthful, you, I never ever thought of being a healer or that would be you know the line of work for for me. As I said, I wanted to be a platform mediumship. I wanted to be there, you know, and give give the messages from the platform and and do all these things, you know, that I had witnessed and seen, you know, through my journey. Yes. But what what happened is I was on a course, uh, you know, uh, through an air. And we had been sitting for trans development for quite some time, getting used to sitting into that energy, sitting into that trans power, allowing the communication to come forward, allowing the blending with spirit, all these things that you will go through yourself and everybody who develops mediumship, you know, is just allowing more and more freedom to the spirit world to be able to come forward. And then my tutor at the time, is a gentleman called Mark, he says to me, there's a gentleman, he says, that's been with you for quite some time, he says, but he's only really made himself present to me just now. He says, I'm not going to tell you who this gentleman is. He says, for he may just be a, a visiting you, leaving a little bit of energy and moving on. He says, so we'll see how the day progresses. But I have been aware of him, he says, through the weekend, and I have been aware of him on other workshops that we have done together. And I thought, that's very interesting. And then what happens, we went into, uh, you know, back into the group later on that day. We were sitting, obviously, building up the energy for communication. And this gentleman had come forward and he was speaking about how much healing was important to him and how much the healing journey was special to him and, you know, and certain things that had took place in his journey. And he's given an explanation all to do with healing and a bit about his life and healing. And I didn't know who this gentleman was to be very truthful with you. And then he started to show me pictures in my mind's eye. And he showed me of, of it was the most simplest thing, of a lady giving him flowers at a shop. I thought, that's interesting. I thought, he must be a florist, you know? Okay, yeah. And then she, uh, he went on, and then a few, a few other things regarding healing, but he was healing people. I could see his hands. It was like I was seeing it from his perspective, healing people and doing things, you know, uh, doing certain things with his hands and energy flowing through him. And then he, uh, he showed me a nameplate on his desk, which was EDW. And, of course, you know, when you're in alter state, it's very much a myth. People think that you have to be, you know, completely gone, you know, in a hypnotic state that your mind's completely out of it. That might happen uh, uh, even today, but it, it, it's a rarity, I can assure you, even with physical mediumship, because we're part of the connection, we're part of that energy. They're using and utilizing our body. It's always a part of the medium and, you know, the, the medium or the person involved in what takes place. But what happened then is I thought, you know, in my mind came and I thought, you know, it's just, it's just Harry Edwards. And that was the name that came into me, EDW. And I thought, Harry Edwards. Now, I really ha didn't, as I say, I wasn't really interested in healing. I had known of Mr. Edwards, but it didn't really mean anything to me. I hadn't read anything or done anything, you know, regarding his work. Mm -hmm. And then when we came back, obviously, we went for, for a break, you know, and I went to see the tutor and I says to him, listen, is this, you know, Harry Edwards is working with me? He says, yes, it is. He says, but please, he says, at this stage, he says, don't tell anybody, he says, who's working with you? He says, because if you take it out there, he says, people will ridicule you. He says, you know, he says, the wall, he says, people are very quick, he says, at trying to bring people down. He says, and that's in all walks of life, not just in mediumship. That's correct, yes. So I thought, that's fine. So I just, you know, I developed with Mr. Edwards, and then I realized when I got home that evening, I had a book, believe it or not, which was a book written by Mr. Edwards. And when I opened up the, the page, I don't know why I bought the book, to be very truthful, I think it was the first book I ever bought in spiritualism. It was a healing book. I mean, open the page, it says, Best Wishes, Harry. And oh, thought, it was signed by Harry? Aye, ah, signed by Harry Edwards. You indeed, need, yeah. you need, Chris, if you wouldn't mind, just to share with the audience who Harry Edwards is. Was. Harry. Is and Harry, was. <laughs> yes, indeed. Harry Edwards, I suppose, last century was one of the most prolific healers that ever was, spiritual healer. He was an absolutely wonderful gentleman that, you know, to be, Harry Edwards was, and most people don't know this, but Harry Edwards was actually a physical trans medium. He developed for 11 years to do physical mediumship, you know, when you have phenomena, materializations, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Harry Edwards, when he first set out to do this, to do the work, obviously the spiritual, spiritual work, he actually set out to expose the people that as frauds. That's what he did. And he went along to a church and he got the evidence that he could not believe, which sort of opened his mind up, obviously, to maybe a different realm. Wow. Yeah, indeed. And then he started to study There's some things. He was uh, he was in the army. There's lots of stories about him of miraculous healings. He even done in the army. There was uh, a gentleman which, uh, you know, a harem of ladies, obviously, they were in a house, and he was in, in a house next door with the army, and the lady was bitten with a scorpion. 
and he went into obviously into that compound and you know healed the lady, you know, and done certain things, and the lady survived with the scorpion sting, you know, and lots of in these times scorpion stings took people over to the spirit side of life, you know, he done lots and lots of different things, but he he developed you know for eleven years as a physical medium. And then the spirit world says to him that he must make the choice. He either makes the choice of becoming a healer or to go down the road of physical mediumship. And he chose to do healing work. And I promise you, you know, he, he is recorded, you know, with all the healings that he did, thousands and thousands of healings, you know, and to the extent was, you know, that now he's recognized, as I think last, last century, is the most prolific spiritual healer that ever was. Ever was, yes. And there's a Harry uh, Edwards healing center is mm-hmm. in the uk a, yeah correct yes he he he, uh, he uh, opened up a center with the harry edwards healing sanctuary which is in the sheer and sorry indeed which is still operational today uh they still have lots and lots of people that go uh to uh to visit his center there's lots of people who work there they do lots lots of different courses regarding healing there i've had the pleasure of going down there it's another story uh i met a gentleman in wales through my development of the healing and ended up at uh, being invited down to the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. Uh, when I was there, I was very much aware of the presence of Henry, as he's known to his friends. Uh, as we walked around, uh, around uh, about his uh, healing sanctuary, I had the pleasure of going into his own bedroom, which is obviously still there today. So we got took, taken behind closed doors, if, you, if that makes sense, and shown around with things. It's been an absolute wonderful journey. And I even remember sitting in, in his front room and in his parlour room, and it's now has a bar and stuff. And I remember saying to my wife, this is all changed. This is not how it used to be. And my wife had says, oh, yes, whatever, you know. Yeah. And then and then two ladies actually came into the room, sat down on a couch opposite us. And they says, we used to come here years ago. It's all changed, you know. Oh, it's amazing. Chris, I just have to ask, are those spirit voices behind you or children? <laughs> I think it's children. Uh-huh. <laughs> I will close the window. No, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's just funny. Uh, there was one interview that I was uh, talking to someone, and all I could hear was this dog snoring. And, of course, it, she had a she had a big dog under her desk, and there was no way to wake up the dog. I said, just let the dog snore. Yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, closing the window. I just wanted to make sure we we knew what that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, there is, I, I can assure you there is, there is spirit children that are attached to me that come and work through me. I have a little, lovely little boy in the, when I work with physical mediumship who's a little energy worker called uh, Charles, but the spirit will call him Chuckles. It'll be Charlie, you know. Wow. So, you know, we, we all have uh, spirit children that work with us. Spirit children in, in you know, the spirit world are cherished, to be very truthful with you. Yeah, you know? I, I bet. So let's talk a little bit about the healing. Are we talking, I mean, I know I said in the description that there's different kinds of healing, but there are some actual physical healings of symptoms and diseases and things, as well as um, other kinds of healings, correct? Of course, indeed, yeah. I'm, going, I mean, sorry for jump, jumping off, off no, it's the, okay. the conversation there. When the, the healing element came about with myself, to be very truthful, I wasn't, like I said, I didn't really want to, I had no intention ever of being a healer. And then I sort of started to embrace it a little bit and thinking, you know, what's going to happen? But I'd never done a healing, to be honest with you. I didn't really understand what healing was all about. Mm-hmm. And I certainly didn't know what a trance healing was. I'd never experienced it. And I did like, probably what everybody does is I started to look on the internet for trance healing. And I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any information about it. You could find things on psychic surgery, which was uh, is an advancement of, of trance, you know. But I, I didn't, you know, understand what it was. There's lots of things to do with the Philippines, you know, and wonderful healers, you know, that do obviously, you know, with instruments and that kind of thing, you know. But I didn't obviously understand what trans healing was. And I remember the first trans healing I ever did was uh, in front of a, a demonstration of, uh, well, so we're all developing in a group. And I, and I didn't have a clue, to be honest with you. I'd never done a healing before in my life. And I remember standing behind, you know, the lady and thinking what I thought it was. And it wasn't a trance healing. It wasn't a spiritual healing. It was a Chris Rather healing, to be truthful with you. Mm-hmm. Just me thinking what it should be. And I remember standing there for about 10 minutes. And then, obviously, the tutor asked me to, to come back and then asked me what, what was that. Could I explain what that was? And I said, well, that was a healing, you know. And he asked me just to sit down, you know, and shook his head at me. But, you know, that's my uh, or, or intention of it. And then what happened, I, I through time started, obviously, with the spirit wasn't listening to other things. I went to a course in Wales, and there was a trance healer there. And this lady uh, got up and done a trance healing. And once I realized what a trance healing was, I couldn't believe how simple and natural it is. You know, all mediumship is simple, I promise you. You know, it's us as human beings who put mad 
you know, ideas onto it, what it should be. But right. all forms of mediumship are simple, and especially healing. We're only we're only the channel for the energy to come through us. But I witnessed what the lady did, and that was my eureka moment. And then I was asked to come up and do a healing. I think I'd done three healings or something, and I couldn't believe what was taking place. You know, it was absolute wonder. The feedback that we were getting was astounding. But I could feel the presence, you know, of 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 Henry. You know, at the time, you know, and it took me quite some time to call him Henry. I can assure you, I always gave him the respect of Mr. Edwards, you know. But I could feel the, the power of Henry, Henry coming forward and the healing flowing through me. And, and it's indescribable, the, the energy and the love and the compassion that comes through when we do, we do this line of work. And then I was asked by the tutor to have a look. He had a problem with kidney stones. And he asked if I would do a healing with him. And to be very truthful, I was panicking about it. I say all this was new to me. All, all everything we had done with development was sort of behind closed doors and not in front of people that we didn't really know. That right. makes sense to you. Yes. And then he explained that he had had kidney stones, or had a kidney stone, and he was he was booked in to go for an operation the following week. See, because he was really in severe pain. He was, you know, sweating profusely. You know, well, it was a thing. He was really, you know, unwell with it. And I, he asked if I could do a healing. I said, fine. He said, but you follow the direction of the spirit world. And I thought, okay, panicking. Okay, and then he, and then he invited us in, and he says to me, "No, whatever you want to do, you you allow it to take place." And I says, "Okay, if you don't mind, I says we'll put you in the middle on a seat." I says, "And I have to put a, I put three chairs round about you, like a triangle formation." And he says, "That's fine." He says, "No, I said I have to pick another two people, which was another two healers that I knew were in the room, so I picked them, to join in, and then I sat on one side, obviously near with the gentleman to the back, where the gentleman's kidneys were, so he was in the middle of the group." I remember going into an altered state, and I remember hearing uh, Mr. Ed was asking the rest of the group in the room to send their energy into what was taking place, to send their thoughts and their energy to transfer it to the middle. And then I remember Mr. Ed was saying, oh, that's a tricky little fellow, okay? And he was trying to, it was like almost like you could hear those, like, like it was the bombarding, you know, trying to break and pick. It was almost like he was trying to go in, in my mind, visualizing that they were trying to pick this stone out. And I thought, that's interesting. And then, uh, you know, we done the healing, he came back, the gentleman, and at the time he felt a little bit better, but not, you know, not not greatly better. The following day, uh, you know, the tutor came back into class and says, you know, uh, you know I feel a lot better, he, he, almost back to normal. And then he went, obviously, when the course finished, and he went uh, for his for his operation the following week, when he got there, the kidney stones had gone. Not, not, not the big one, but all of them, he had six of them. They, they disappeared, gone? All of, them, all of them disappeared, completely gone. No operation was needed. Oh, that was my first introduction to the energy of, of trance healing and trust in the spirit world. That was my first ever healing that took place. You know? that, that's powerful. Indeed, yeah. Like I say, it's not powerful, it's just it's the love of everybody well, and the love yes. of the spirit world. You know, it's just it's not me, I'm just a channel to be very truthful. You. I can't I can't cure anything, you know, and I say that to everybody who comes to see the work that we do on behalf of the spirit world. But, you know, I trust the spirit world. And I open up that energy to them and allow these people to come forward and the results are amazing to be very truthful with you. Mm. Uh, so yeah. how, so t- tell us more because now this has developed to you having your own uh, psychic surgery. And let me just ask you, in the States when we talk about surgery, it's actually cutting into someone with uh, yeah. that. And I know in the UK they refer to a doctor's office as the surgery. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you use the word <coughs> surgery? Well, what the, uh, to be very true for you, the name psychic surgeon that was given to me was given to me from the spiritual community. It's not it's not a word I took myself. You know, I don't really care in titles. You know, even on my development, I didn't really care who came and worked with me because, you know, lots of people wanted big big names, you know, the Red Cloud, Sitting Bull, all these kind of people, prominent figures in history. I didn't care, you know, uh-huh. because it was always my thought, if these people go to spirit side of life, no matter who they are, they will, be, they will be taught to come and work from spirit side of light. Right. So who, whoever is best for us at that stage in our development, that's the people that will be introduced to work through us. So it didn't matter to me if the name was George Bob mm-hmm. or David. It didn't matter, you know, to be very truthful with you. I didn't care. I just knew that the work that they came forward would be, you know, for the betterment of, of the development and, and, for, and for, to help people on this side of life. Because that's really all we want to do. All I want to do is try to help, you know? Yes, yes. 
indeed, you know. But, you know, but, but with my development, it started to lead, uh, you know, in, into other things. You know, I was starting to do, if you understand, with, with, with the psychic source, like I say, it was given to me by the spiritual community. It's not, not a title I took, mis- took myself. Okay. I would just be quite happy just to be known as a, just a healer or, 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 or a spirit worker, doing, you know, a person working for the spirit world mm-hmm. who, who does healing, you know, facilitates healing, because I'm just a facilitator for them. That's why I'm quite happy. But the psychic surgery is, the title is, is an advancement of the, the altered state of trance. And what it is, you know, spiritual healing, when we open up to spiritual healing, we open up a channel to, to, to the universal energy, and the energy flows through. As it has a, a, all energy, it has an intelligence contained within it. And it will obviously when you make the contact or you send it to someone, the energy will flow inside that body and it will look obviously for the healing energy to kick the immune system in or whatever needs balance and all these things. It will address certain things. When we do trance, it's a little bit different because we're actually allowing that energy, instead of it just flowing, it comes and it blends with us a little bit deeper. And what happens is the energy is, we have an alchemist and like a pre-op, if you understand. And what happens is they'll come and they'll assess what's going on within that person. And then, you know, if you have a problem with a kidney or if you have a problem with a bladder or whatever the ailment is, your pancreas or whatever it is, or liver or whatever the ailment is, they look at that, they address it, and what they do is they mix up colours. You have an alchemist, you know, the spirit side of life, and they say, we need this colour, we have to address this. So what they do is they mix up that colour, which is specific just for you. That colour is your colour. And that's why very often you'll hear people say when they have a healing, I was aware of colours. Because these colours, this healing energy, this vibration is, is made up in that colour. And if we were trans medium, we're able to allow that energy to come and blend for us, to allow that people to come forward so they can put that energy directly into that body. With psychic surgery, it's a little bit different. What happens with the psychic surgery state of things is doctors, healers and surgeons from spirit side of life that have worked here and were compassionate in the work that they did, when they go to spirit side of life, they wish to come forward and to carry out that good work. Although they learn new techniques and how to, how to utilize the energy and spirit side of life, they still come forward and to wish to do the work that they did. With people like myself who have to be, and you have to be a physical trans medium, that's another thing. It's a very, very rare commodity in the spiritual world. It was rare, you know, 50 years ago. It was rare 100 years ago. Yes. And it's rare today, to be very true for you. It's a certain quality that's contained within the physical makeup of the human being. You know, uh, and, and it's a rare commodity, I promise you, uh, within your chemical makeup. But they're able to come and blend with us, just like in an altered state of trance. And what happens is we give ourselves over to them. They don't come and possess us. There's nothing demonic about it in any way. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a misunderstanding when people say, you know, I can feel the energy coming and they're taking over. Nobody takes over you. This is our life and our body. Mm-hmm. So what happens is those from spirit side of life come, they come and they blend with your auric field. They bring that energy, because that's your life force energy around the belt. They bring the energy close to us. Like you see yourself and you feel a little vibration when the energy comes. It's just because that's mixing the energy around the you and having a wee adverse effect on, on, on the energy around the you. But us, as, as physical mediums uh, and trans mediums, we allow the energy to come forward. We, we, we develop it over a period of time so it becomes very natural and easy to us so the spirit world can come and blend. So what they're doing is they're mixing their energy with your auric field of your energy. And the, and the two energies become one. So we just basically let their energy take over our energy and our consciousness just shifts to the side a little bit. That's how it works. But with the psychic surgery side of things, what happens is you, you allow people to come forward to your surgeons. So if you have a, a problem with your pancreas, you will have a specialist in their own field that will come and work through you looking at that pancreas. If you have a problem with your heart, then you have a heart specialist. If you have a problem with your with, 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 with the brain, you get a, a, a neurosurgeon. You get all these things, or, you know, I have a lady that works with me who is a gynecologist. You know, we have all these people that come and work for us, and we have an endless supply in the spirit world, you know. I may be aware of 12 people that I know, you know, and I'm aware of their energy, and when they come forward, but that I can assure you there is hundreds and thousands probably more that wish, wish and can come forward if they're required. Hmm. And th- th- when you uh, brought up that lady, you don't physically touch people. I, no, I, to be honest with you, when I, when, I wrote, when I wrote the book and done other things, I would, I would not physically touch a, a, a lady's body. Right. I wouldn't do it. I, I'm a married man and <laughs> I can indeed you can understand I've got lots of problems. <laughs> but I promise you the spirit will never do a thing like that. You know, what happens is some things, what can happen when you give yourself 100% over to the spirit world and the energy comes forward, 
and the people that come forth from spirit side of life, you know, they, they are never going to do anything inappropriate, never, ever, okay? But what can happen if you interfere with the connection? Now, you as a developer medium will understand this, that if you interfere with the connection and break the connection, you could accidentally brush against the lady's body. Right. Okay? Not the spirit world. Spirit world are never going to make a mistake. But as, you know, if you don't give 100% to them, you know, or you are suffering from injury, you, you, can, you can break the link. Just like we are doing a, a communication or whatever, we can break the link ourselves, you know, just through, you know, the most stupid sort of things. But yes, I would never, ever, ever put my hand upon a lady's body. It's always 18 inches above, okay? To be very true for you. Because I didn't want, you know, it was an agreement I had with the spirit world for that. If I'm going to work above the people, I'm going to do that. And even today, if we're going to do an operation, it's above the body because all, all healing takes place on the spiritual body. It's an absolute doppelganger of the physical body. Whatever ailment you carry on your physical, you carry on your spiritual body. Ah. So when these, yeah, when these people come forward from spirit side of life to work through us, because they're spirit, what they're doing is they're connecting with, with the spirit world and they and their, their spirit onto your spirit and onto the spirit of the person. There has to be a three-way connection and all mediumship there's that three-way connection. If you're given information, obviously from the spirit world to the medium and to, to the recipient, there's always a three-way triangle. So all healings that take place on the spiritual body. So if you don't connect with the spiritual body of that person, of the spirit of that person, a healing will not take place. You will give a transference of energy over to that person, and for a short period of time, they will feel that it's absolutely wonderful. They will feel re 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 rejuvenated and all these things, but the healing hasn't took place, what's happened is you've just given them a wee boost of energy into their physical body. So all mm. healing takes place on the spiritual body. But what's just happened over a, over a period of 10 years now is sometimes what was happening is sometimes now when I do work, I do actually put my hand you know, maybe onto the tummy or the knee of, 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 of a person who comes for a healing. And the only reason why we did that was that I started to realize as my develop, you know, my development got deeper and deeper and my understanding of things, that some people when they were here on, on, on the physical side of life and like to work, some people like to come forward and put their hands onto the physical body and touch the spirit inside the physical body. And some people like to work above. So for me to do that alone was an agreement I had with the spirit world. I was interfering in what was taking place. Because if they wanted to come forward and put their hand on, on, on someone's knee, uh, to work, obviously, you know, to, with, with a knee joint or an arthritic joint or whatever it is, then it, I have to allow them to work it the way that they want to work and mm. they carry out the healing and not to interfere with it. But I promise you, it took me a few years to realize that. Well, I'm you sure know? by then, too, you have the rapport with the person. You've asked permission, well, maybe, they, that they know what's coming. <clears throat> that it's not a, of a complete shock. People are comfortable when they come to see you. Of course, indeed. I mean, the first, you know, bit of, of a healing that takes place is is it, the explanation of what what may happen, what they may feel. It's not it's not to put any thoughts into people's minds so that you know they're looking for it. It's just so that you know the the experiences take place that they're not to be concerned. I mean, I always, you know, I always carry an independent witness when a healing takes place. Anyway, you know, to be truthful with you, you know, I just think it's obviously just something I've always done. I've been it along. Another thing, the healing and that it takes place, you know, is we are only complementary. You know, to you know, to, to, to complementary health service related really to, to what's taking place. You know, anybody who comes on medication or under the you know the, the jurisdiction or you know or the, or the, or with the hospitals or their doctors or whatever, they still have to take their medicines. They still have to obviously you know attend attend their hospital appointments, all that kind of thing. We just help in con in, in, con in conjunction with them to see what the spirit world can do to help. But very often when people come to see me, you know, is when they've had pain for for quite some time. Or they've had an ailment where they've been told that there's nothing more the hospital can do for them. And this is when people obviously start to search, to look at other alternatives, to see if, if there's anything else there that can help. Have you had that happen, that someone's had a pain that modern medicine hasn't helped and a trans healing has made a difference? Of course, indeed. I, you know, I mean, I mean, the list is endless, to be very truthful with you. I mean, we've even had, I mean, to be very truthful with you, I mean, you know, they say, I can't cure anything. But we have had, you know, certain conditions, even, you know, you know, I mean, there's a lady, you know, just, well, recently she was diagnosed with, with, with cancer of the sarcophagus, you know, down, down there, on the throat there. Yeah. But the lady had come, you know, uh, diagnosed as, as terminal, uh, 
uh, came to see us. She went for a checkup there about six months ago, and the doctor says to her, "We're not saying that you're cured, but we can't find it." Wow. Yeah, and I know that's a strong statement to say out in the air or to anybody. No. I know that you know, but you know, I promise you that you know I have you know verification from this lady, you know, and this lady has been kind enough even to give me a video, you know, a video testimonial to say that that you know that it's just no longer there. And the lady's been for scans since then, and it's completely gone. You know, yeah, we've had uh, conditions where people have had you know uh, when they've lost this, the, the taste and the smell. Uh, that that's been brought back. We've had uh, people, you know, that have a lady with the antibodies had risen so high that you know that she was on a transplant for a kidney operation and they had to take her off the the waiting list because her antibodies had risen to such a level. And when they get to that level, there's nothing more the hospital can do for them. You know, if they can catch it early enough, they can give them medication and try to reduce it. But I'm afraid it was past that level, so there was absolutely nothing she could do. So she was looking at obviously a dialysis machine for the rest of her life. And then a lady came to see me four times. I wanted to see what the spirit world could do through me. Uh, she got a, a, a telephone conversation, a call from her specialist saying they couldn't quite understand what had taken place. Because she was under no medication for that, but it had dropped significantly. They can now put her back on the waiting list. That lady has a new uh, uh, kidney and she has it back to her normal life or as normal as possible they can. That's incredible. No. Even on your website, there are many, many, many testimonials. Oh, but I want to ask you too: if, if they're working on, um, what did you call it? Are they're not working on the body itself, the spirit body? They're working on the spiritual body. Spiritual That's what they work body. On. And it starts. What happens when they work on the on the spiritual body, Sandra? It starts a chain reaction. So what they do is it starts a chain reaction and takes it into the physical. So what they do is they work on the spiritual body which obviously the spiritual body is inside. I mean, this is the vessel. The physical body is the vessel that we use on this side of life, right. you know, for our, for our, you know, our, our, our journey. So what happens is anything that's on, on, you know, on the spiritual body or the physical body, they're one or one of the same. So when we work on the spiritual body, what happens is they look to correct what's taking place within the spiritual body, and then it has a chain reaction. It goes and what starts to work onto the physical body. Well, sometimes healings can be miraculous, to be very truthful with you, and quite a lot of them are. You know, we had a lady that came to see us just recently. She had rheumatoid arthritis in the, in the hands. I mean, she came, her hands were, you know, were, were if you understand, she was in lot, lot, lots of pain with them. And we gave her one healer, and she came back to see me a month later, and she says, you know, and she was moving her hands freely. And she says, you know, I've been under under the guidance of the hospital for five years, she says, and I've got an appointment to see my, my specialist next week. She says, what am I going to tell him? <laughs> she, she was an old lady, you know, an older lady, you know, but an absolutely beautiful and lovely lady, a beautiful soul. And she says, quite easily, I said, just give a gentleman a card, mm-hmm. a business card, you know. And she's kind of flustered with that, but she took it anyway, you know. But we have had, you know, certain things that took place. We've had a little girl that had Crohn's disease. You know, that we girl, I think, is on my own testimony on my website. And we asked all, you know, very friendly with, with the mother, and we still obviously see the girl from time to time. But that wee girl, you know, they've done, they done research with that little girl in the hospital. And, you know, from the same time as she was administered, the one thing, she was the, the, the sort of youngest child in Scotland to be administered for Crohn's disease. But that wee girl is completely in remission, you know. And she hasn't had any operations or anything. And they've done a, they've done, they've done a test where every, every person that had been administered from the same time, you know, and, and the cases to that hospital, every other person, every other child has had to go through a major operation. But this wee girl hasn't. Wow. The only difference, yeah, the only difference is, is the mother sought, you know, someone like myself. There's under one, other wonderful healers out there, not just, you know, the spirit right. of me, you know, there's, I mean, there's, Lots and lots of wonderful things out there, you know, lots and lots of healers. It's not enough healers. But anyway, lady I come to see obviously what the spirit will could do through myself. And now that we get all is completely in remission. I mean, even our bloods. I mean, one thing the doctor did say, he says, you know, the most strangest thing, he says, with a child with Crohn's disease, he says, they do not grow. He says, because the body cannot digest the food properly, if you understand. Yes. You know, so they're always they're always under some sort of undernourished or under height and all that kind of thing. She says, but this little girl, she surpasses all the charts. She says, she's grown and like a normal child. Mm-hmm. And the only, inter- only intervention of anything that took place has been that extra energy and that work from the spirit world. It's incredible. But Chris, it's- let me ask you, I, I, I trust that people get healing on the spiritual body, but what about times that the cancer isn't cured or the pain isn't doesn't stop? Is there... 
a belief in your mind that this is all experimental or that, I mean, I know obviously everyone, you encourage everyone to continue going to their physicians, but I also know we all can't live forever. Is there a healing that takes place even though the body itself isn't healed, do you believe? Well, what, what I think, Sandra, to be very truthful with, with that, to be very truthful, if we have, you know, one of the most major sort of problems we have is stress in our life. Stress is a trigger point, I believe, which carries and opens up the doors to lots of ailments within the physical body, you know. Mm-hmm. When we have stress, the body has to release. It's designed to release, so it has to release somewhere. So it usually goes to the weakest point, okay, which usually the disease sets in, whether it's cancer or whatever, whatever it may be. It has to release. So I often think, you know, that stress is a major factor, okay. But what I do understand is if we are, if we have sort of, you know, been bad to our bodies or caused lots of problems within our bodies through, you know, drugs or sovereign abuse or whatever it is, okay, and do these kind of things, then these are things that we have done and abused our body. And the spirit world, you know, can help in all aspects regarding that to try and help to put it back to how it should be because we have a, we have a, you know, a lifespan or spiritual journey to carry out, you know, on the physical world. But if it's your time to go to the, to back, to back home to, to, to the spiritual world and that, and you, you are destined to go through with that condition and it's going to take you back to, you know, back home to the spirit world. There's absolutely nothing that the spirit world can do to change that. But saying that they can help with the pain management. I have lots of people, you know, that come to see me, obviously myself, and, and their journey is to go home, you know, and, and, and we know that isn't going to change. But it gives them, you know, that energy that they need. It picks them up. It gives them, you know, that, that takes away that pain so they're no longer in pain. For the travel, I mean, why should you be in pain? You know, so uh, the spirit work can help in all aspects. And sometimes about the healing, to be very truthful with you, and it did take me quite some time to understand this, that the healing sometimes for the people is to make the connection for the transition so they can go home. I had a lady that I went to see, a daughter got in touch with me uh, about two years ago, maybe three years ago. And an absolutely beautiful lady and asked me if I'd come along to a home visit. Her mother was, wasn't well. She had a stage four cancer of the ovaries. And I went along to visit the lady. I took, you know, a, a portable healing bed. And the lady was unable to obviously get up. It was a very, very frail lady. And spoke to the daughter. Went in and spoke to, to the mother, you know. And, and obviously she was fearful of what was taking place. Yes. You know, obviously, you know, because she, she, death was imminent, if you understand, you know. Mm-hmm. And, or going back home. And I spoke to the lady, you know, and she said, I'd like to get you a healer. So that's lovely. And at the time, I worked with the lady in the bed, and my hands were above the lady's maybe about 18 inches above the lady. And when I came back, obviously, you know, out of the altered state and returned back, obviously, back into the physical world, I says to the lady, you know, I says, you know, did you enjoy that? She says, yes, it was lovely. She says, I could actually feel, she says, if someone, she says, was was working on my ovaries, that's what it felt like. And we often get that report back, you know, to be honest with you. I said, that's lovely, but in the spirit world, they weren't going to even an opportunity, they weren't going to miss an opportunity to see what they could do to help that lady. You know, even though we know she was she was heading back, obviously, to the spirit side of life, being very, very frail, but they were helping with the pain, because there's no reason for her to be in pain. You know, they will try their best. Spirit world will try 100%, 150% for us, you know, to see what they can do to help. But the most interesting thing was, I received a letter from the daughter about a week later, thanking, obviously, myself for taking the time to come along to see what the spirit world could do. And now her mother was ready. Her mother had that acceptance in her life that she was ready to go. She had no fear whatsoever. And then I realized that it's not all about the healing. It's about sometimes that the healing is actually to do with the transition back home to the spirit world, to make that connection so that they are aware of the loved ones are coming forward and they're going to be fine. And I thought it was absolutely wonderful, you know. So it's all, there's many, many different aspects to what we do. You know, it's not all about the miraculous healing. And some healings are a process. I mean, we've had a lady, you know, had ME for 30 years, better than for five years. That lady has a normal life. She came and see me maybe about a dozen times. You know, it's a process. You understand? Because very often, you know, very often when people come to see a healer, they want a miraculous cure. But they'll go to hospital or the doctor to accept a treatment. You know, either with tablets or... Or, or, or a period of time where they keep going back for a, for, a, for a therapy. It's very often the same with healers. You know, we only give, you know, our, the opportunity for the spirit world to come through and to work. And sometimes it's a gradual process. Sometimes people have had, you know, an ailment within their body for, for many, many, many years, you know, and it's all about conditioning and putting it back very, very slowly and also conditioning the mind. 
you know. And spiritual just don't work on the physical level. <clears throat> I mean, very often when we see, excuse me, when we see a healer, you know, we do a demonstration in a room <clears> of <throat> 50 or 60 people or whatever, it's 100 people, mm-hmm. very often everybody in that room will receive a healing because the energy that's built up, the kinetic energy and the energy that builds up as we connect to the spirit world, they're not going to miss an opportunity. You know, and very often people will say, you know, I could feel a healing, I felt like I was getting a healing. And very often sometimes, you know, when I, I'm watching a demonstration or, I'm, you know, I'm speaking to the crowd, I can see the healer standing behind them. The people have come forward to give these people a healing, standing behind them, you know, which is absolutely, absolutely incredible and wonderful. When I just took the course at the Arthur Finley College in trance, and part of it was trance healing, the yeah. tutor had said that this woman had brought her husband in for the healing, and she herself had some kind of an eye disease and had very, very poor eyesight. And even though he received the healing, her eyes went better than they've ever been. They went better than perfect. And when she went to her own doctor, he, he says he just couldn't explain it there's it was just impossible <laughs> yeah. so to be present in the room and to be also be uh, giving the healing too that's very inspiring it's absolutely wonderful i mean when i do a healing and i have my own you know healing surgeries it's very often what takes place is a lot of people come and blend with myself you know and there'll be a team working directly with me what happens is i become a generator you know, we build up our energy in our solar plexus with sort of a battery pack mm-hmm. but what happens is i become a generator for them you know and i obviously plug in and as soon as i do that it generates an energy around about the bed and then we have maybe two or three different teams around about that bed so although i may be you know i'll be aware that a gentleman is going to be working on a heart or he's going to be working with the liver or whatever it is there's also people from Spirit Side of Life, other surgeons, other teams that are there working through the energy that is created and doing certain things. And very often we have reports where, you know, I will I will come back and I will, you know, they say, oh, I felt you working you know, on the, or the feel them working on the heart or feel heat or a vibration or whatever it is that, that they feel. But they say, also, I forgot to tell you, you know, I had a problem with my ball, but, I, but you know, I could feel you working on that. And it's not me, and I didn't know that condition. It's a spirit world because they already know what they're going to do and what conditions there? The specialists are already there in their own field to have a look at that. Oh, it's so Good. spectacular, yeah. Chris. Our time time is uh, is running up here. I don't want to keep the episode okay. too Sorry. much longer. But no, let's <laughs> let's talk about if people want to be in touch with you, whether they want to read your book, whether they want to, you know, if they happen to be in Scotland or in the UK or Europe, how can they find out more? You can find out more on my website, which is www.chrisratterpsychicsurgeon.com. Or they can go catch me on, on Facebook, which is Chris Ratter, or, or, the, or the public page, which is uh, Chris Ratter, Psychic Surgeon, and Trans Healer. Or they can uh, they can read my book, they can pick it up in Waterstones or Amazon or any major uh, book uh, store. I think it's sold in 50 countries. And just, you know, I, I'm open to, you know, people who want to get in touch, give me a call, I don't mind. It'd be very true for you, you know. I mean, I'm more than happy to to sit and speak with anybody regarding any element and see what the Spirit will can do to help. I also have, uh, on, on my page, I have uh, you know certain things that we do and they can, on my website where they can look at my clinics where I am in different countries, see what I'm doing. They can also, uh, you know, there's a, a thing there for absent healing, which is an absolute wonderful form of healing, distant healing, as mm-hmm. we call it. They can go on and they can send a contact and you add them to a list and we send healing on a regular basis to people. It's absolutely a wonderful, powerful And form free. Of Right, it's it's free. Yes, just put it and put the name on the list. Yeah, and then you also offer Skype healing. I just thought about that. Um, yeah, you, what is that? Skype, Skype healing is where is is where, where we we are make an appointment. Just the same time we give the people obviously you know time where we can speak to them, and then I go into an altered state. I become very much aware of what's taking place uh, within the people. Uh, it, it was something that was developed through the spirit world and myself. The way we do it is we. Uh, is we allow the energy to build up the vibration within the room, and then, then I'm aware, as I say, I have the, you know the, that wonderful ability to be aware of the spirit people as they come forward. I'm aware of the specialists as they come forward, and as they work on that ailment, uh, I talk to people through it. I talk them with the colours I see all through all through the Skype healing. I also uh, give an explanation of what's going on uh, to a certain degree with with you know the telos and what they're working on. Uh, the feedback we've had was absolutely phenomenal. Before we took it out to the public, we did it. We did it and practiced it behind closed doors uh, with working mediums mm-hmm. uh, and also members of the public uh, that I asked that they would be volunteers for it. 
until it was such a standard that we, I could understand exactly what was taking place. It's a wonderful form of healing. It gives people accessibility, but they can make it to a clinic. I mean, I do Skype healings all over the world on a regular basis. We can, and that know. can be just as powerful <clears throat> as seeing you in person? Just no? exactly, just just as powerful. The only thing is sometimes, you know, when people ha have a nail, yes, it's, it's a very, very powerful form of healing, Skype healing. Absent healing is a very, very powerful form of healing, to be very truthful with you. You know, there'll be more people that I will ever, that I will help, or the spirit world will help through that connection and the attunement to the spirit world, through distant healing and Skype healing, that kind of thing. And I will ever have the pleasure, obviously, of working with, or, you know, you know, with my hands above them or, or the energy, you know, placing upon them. But the only what happens to be very truthful, and the reason why people have to come and see a healer at a clinic or a demonstration, or whatever it is, is because there are certain things that are required when a healing takes place, just for certain conditions, not for them all. But the spirit world cannot reproduce that energy on their side of life; it has to come through the physical body. Oh, that makes sense. Of, of a healer. Yeah, that makes that's sense. That's why. Yeah, that's why people have to come and see, you know, a healer on this side of life. That the spirit will come, come and work through, or we would just send absolute healing to everybody, and there would be no, no reason for anybody to attend the clinic. Right. That, 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 that's how it works. Hmm. Very, very great. <laughs> Any closing words? Final words? I would just like to say that there isn't, you know, not enough healers in the world. It's a wonderful opportunity, you know, for people who wish to develop healing, you know, and to just trust the spirit world. The spirit world are just full of love and compassion. They have no desire whatsoever to come and frighten us or, or, or you know, or make us fearful of them. And once you understand, you know, what they're all about, I promise you there's no going back. The love and compassion that they have for humanity and for people is second to none. Mm, it's so beautiful. Chris, thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you, Sandra. It's been a privilege, and thank wow. you very much. Yeah, and for our listener, thank you for listening. And I want to remind you, uh, well, actually, if you're listening to this on YouTube, and if you just scroll beneath, there's a link right there for Chris's book, Mediumship Within. This might be something that interests you, or even if you're interested in mediumship and how to get started, I tell you, his book is an easy read. It's, it's filled with so much really great information, uh, and I wasn't making it up it really truly is my favorite book um and i'm delighted that we got to speak with chris today and yeah uh it's 2017 when we're recording this who knows when it is when you're listening um but the world could use more healers and mediums and really could you imagine what life would be like if people knew uh who we are really and what our life's about and i just i think it's really magical uh phenomenal and you know, as a little kid, I wanted magic to be real so badly. And now here I am, 51 years old, and it is real. I mean, we're so much more powerful than we know. So uh, just a reminder, if you go to wedontdieradio.com, you can click on this or all past episodes of the show. And I have a favor, if you wouldn't mind pressing the share button, however that is that you're listening to this right now. You never know who in your life needs some inspiration, might be going through grief, uh, might, might need a little a little miracle in their life and this listening to this might be that for them so feel free to share and lastly i'd love to meet you in person i will be speaking september 15th through 17th at the afterlife symposium in scottsdale arizona and go to afterlifestudies.org to find out more and to register so in closing my name is sandra champlain and i've been your host on we don't die radio and i do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important so i really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon